me the child. Through dangers untold and hardships unnumbered, I have fought my way here to the castle beyond the goblin city to take back the child that you have stolen. For my will is as strong as yours, and my kingdom is as great as your line, Rob. <coughs> For my will is as strong as yours, and uh, uh, my kingdom is as, um, well, I always forget that line. Uh, carry the one. Um, uh, you have no power over me. Mm, yes. Wolf. Oh, Merlin. Bong. Oh, clock. Oh, wait, Merlin, clock. It's 5.30. It's almost time for the show. Uh, we better flail limbs to the other microphone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you better feed Toby and put him to bed because it's time for the Innisloid Labyrinth 30th birthday show. Please welcome the Goblin King himself, Rob Lloyd. Come on, make some noise. Thank you so much for coming along to the 30th birthday show of Labyrinth. And we here at Innes Lloyd are here to celebrate all things Labyrinth! <laughs> now, of course, we should clarify a few things. Yes. Now, by Labyrinth, we don't mean an actual Labyrinth. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry. Especially this lab Labyrinth looks pretty, pretty cool because look at the Minotaur right there. <laughs> looks really cute. <laughs> Hello. He's playing a bit of Peeky Boo, I Skewer You. I love that game so much. Yeah, you play it a bit differently to me, Mr. Innes. No, uh, it's funny because butts. <laughs> <laughs> People uh, laughing a bit too loud at that one. Uh, <laughs> butts are fun. We also certainly aren't talking about Rob's most delighted and favourite film, Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, that noise means he has an opinion. Uh, <laughs> so, Rob... <laughs> Tell us a little bit more why that groan happened. Oh my God, I hate Pan's Labyrinth, okay? <laughs> uh, we also certainly aren't talking about the manga sequel to Labyrinth called Return to Labyrinth, which you can actually access online. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I, <laughs> that sound means she has an opinion. <laughs> Yeah, it was all going fine. I'm with you until they all the characters transformed into big spaceships. It kind of lost me there. Yeah, uh, and we're certainly not talking about the Labyrinth Society from Trumansburg, New York. Yeah, we would have had them involved, but we didn't have any carrier pigeons. So, and of course, the Trumansburg is what would eventually hit the Roosevelt Titanic. <laughs> See, that was. We'll move on. No, 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 no. I want to do my joke. Remember that scene in Roosevelt Titanic where Kate Washington had sex in a car with Leonardo Obama DiCaprio? This isn't making anything better. <laughs> Get out! <laughs> no, no, no. No, this is actually... This goes in line with all of our one-off shows. Yes. Innes Lloyd, the audience are funnier than the guys. <laughs> And how? <laughs> it's not a director's commentary, it's an audience commentary that comes <laughs> in the DVD. And we're certainly not talking about the board game Labyrinth. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, with, the, uh, with the wonderful German company, as I'm uh, told to pronounce, Ravensburger, uh, is how it's pronounced. So, so, so is, that, is that how you pronounce it? Yes, it is. That's the proper German pronunciation, Ravensburger. So it's that easy to learn German? Uh, yes, you could say that I'm trying to slowly master the German tongue. <laughs> 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 so, um, so you could actually teach the audience to speak German. Uh, apparently that. so. Okay, so and, how do you? In order to pronounce this, apparently the best way to do is to tilt your head up and then back down, <laughs> as if you have just slumped to your death. <laughs> so it goes Ravensburger. Okay, so everyone do that on the count of three. One, two, three. Ravensburger. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There's nothing better than seeing about 30, 40 people going... <laughs> yeah, so this is a, a Caleb Garfinkel. Round of applause! Yeah. Garfinkel, Garfinkel. 
It sounds like some sort of musical duo somewhere. Well, what, Roxette? No, no, not Roxette. Savage Garden? No, not Savage Garden. Madison Avenue? No, it's not Madison Avenue. Bachelor Girl? Yeah, he's the bachelor of a <laughs> bachelor's girl, isn't he? Actually, you've got a story about when it comes to the bachelor or the bachelorette, right? Yes, I was asked to be, uh, I guess, uh, what do you call it? A bachelor, yeah. A bachelor on the bachelorette, yeah. Wow. Oh. <laughs> That's the, that's the loudest response we've got. <laughs> Whoa, fuck off, Labyrinth. Let's hear the stories of that. Why, why didn't you go with it? I didn't want to be one of 12 men hitting a woman in the face with a, my penis. <laughs> so we have decided to go with the classic Ennis Lloyd Coach Quiz. Yes, round of applause for the Coach Quiz. <laughs> so for the Coach uh, Quiz, Quiz. Rob Lloyd is going to go into the audience and if you are uh, interested in maybe uh, uh, coming up to win a fabulous prize, ooh, that is the... And, and what prizes do we have for offer today, Miss Innes? The fabulous prizes include a worm, <laughs> the Jim Henson biography, and how is that described by the ca slightly camp man at Minotaur? It was described as both delightful and heartbreaking. <laughs> Together at last. <laughs> Kinda like my life. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. <laughs> so uh, we need three. Three of our Earth volunteers to put their hand up to compete. One, two, and three. Come on, boys. Yeah, so, uh, please help them up the step. There we go. And so we now. Have a cosplayer right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she already gets a 12 point lead. <laughs> Now, um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to have quotes from the movie, and you have to buzz in with your name, okay? And if you buzz first, uh, you say who uh, says that line, and you get One. a point. Well, since I'm pointed that way, I guess I'll go down. Hallie. Yes, Hallie? Sarah. It is indeed Sarah! Yeah. One point. Come on, come on, we haven't got all day. Ant. Yes. I'm now forgotten. Oh! <laughs> oh. Wait, wait, come on, boy, I haven't got all day. Oh, the hands. Yeah. It is indeed the hands, <laughs> the helping hands. <laughs> It's the helping hand, Jay. Helping hand. Yeah, helping hand. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. I got it with this. That helped me. <laughs> that helped me quite a lot. <laughs> Number six, don't pay attention to them. They're just false alarms. You get a lot of them in the labyrinth. Yeah, oh. Hoggle. Hoggle. It is a big hoggle. Oh my god! Oh, 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 oh. It's a three way tie. It's the last question. Who's good? This is actually pretty cool. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, her head don't come off. Hallie. Hallie? It is indeed a yeah. Well done, Haley. You get to pick whichever of those three prizes you want. <laughs> the worm has been taken. A round pause for our three volunteers. <laughs> Now, there are three men behind Labyrinth. There is Mr. Jim Henson. Round of applause for Jim Henson. <laughs> Producer, George Lucas. Come on, a round of applause for George. <laughs> Some people will never forget or forgive. And finally, uh, conceptual artist, Brian Frow. <laughs> Uh, George Lucas, you may not know this, is a writer, director, producer. Um, <laughs> Uh, his first film, uh, feature-length film, was Thrax 1138 with Robert Duvall. Uh, he then went on uh, to get uh, five Oscar nominations for his next film, American Graffiti. He also produced Howard the Duck. Yeah, there's lots of girl... Lots of girl or duck action there. <laughs> exactly what we want to. And uh, a film series called Star Wars. Um, well, so what's up next, Mr Innes? Well, it's time for everyone's favourite game, ladies and gentlemen. Find the Bulge! <laughs> Did you find the bulge? <laughs> there was at least one in there. <laughs> For about a year and a half, they were constructing the, uh, all the puppets and costumes and stuff like that for this production, but that wasn't just the end of it because if anyone here has worked with puppets before, round of applause if you have. 
Don't forget the My Little Puppet Show will be showing up at Fringe right here at the Butterfly Club. Not that um, we're allowed to announce that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, embargo. Um, <laughs> and Jennifer uh, Connolly found it quite difficult working with the puppets. As Jennifer Connolly says right here, um, what did she say? It was a bit strange working amongst exclusively with puppets in the films, but I think Dave and I got over that and uh, we took the challenge and had a lot of fun. What kind of relationship can you have when you could call David Bowie Dave? Dave. <laughs> How That's awesome would your life be <laughs> being able to get to that point and go, I call David Bowie Dave. Dave. I mean, I've been working with this guy for three years and I still call him Mr. Innes. Damn straight! <laughs> now, now, it was a very ambitious uh, project and two of the sets were some of the largest they'd ever built on L Street. One was uh, the, um, uh, the Goblin City and also the Shaft of Hands. Which is a nightclub in Collingwood. Mm. <laughs> So uh, the lead actress uh, for the role during auditions was Helena Bonham Carter. <laughs> Didn't know that. Yes, she was actually a legitimate actor once when she just would take some drugs and get on screen. Let's just film that, okay? <laughs> that's, that's Helena Bonham Carter. No, um, but they decided for a more uh, commercially viable film, they'd set it in America. So they said goodbye to her and uh, they focused on uh, American actresses to set it in modern American time. Uh, and they went through many, many young actresses who would go on to do great things in the future. One of uh, the actresses who auditioned for it was uh, Jane Krasowski, who went on to do Malcolm in the Middle. No, 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 no that's Jane Kazmarek who had went, gone, went on to do Malcolm in the Middle. I thought that was a town in Poland. No, no, no that's Krakow. I thought that was a song by The Clash. No, that's Rock the Casbah. then I don't know who the fuck that is. <laughs> no, I do, I do that. Yeah, she went on to be uh, annoying in everything she did, including Ally McBeal and 30 Rock. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, it's I her again. I like the voice of assurance down the front row. <laughs> You're yeah. doing well. Uh, n another person who auditioned for the role was Laura Dern. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Who went on to be out-acted by CGI dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. Now... It's an, it's an interesting fact, um, the internet yields great things. Uh, so if you're ever missing your uh, chance to have a Laura Dern Jurassic Park action figure... They were very hard to find. They are very hard to find to find one. You can actually go on Etsy and you can get your own Laura Dern and Jurassic Park stuffed beetle, complete with costume and wig. <laughs> Remember that time when the internet was just there for porn? What the hell has happened? <laughs> it still is. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. Next up, um, another person who auditioned for it was Yasmeen Bleeth, who went on to do Baywatch. Um, Marissa Torme, who went on to win an Oscar for My Cousin Vinny. Ali Sheedy, who went on to do uh, The Breakfast Club. And Sarah Jessica Parker, who went on to win the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> Uh, Toby is now all grown up and he is actually a puppeteer and uh, a puppeteer fabricator all on his own and he really you know, stops that uh, vicious rumour and cliche going around that all uh, puppeteers look like serial killers. You really took your time with that one, Jack. <laughs> Get it into your system. Um, yeah, we have Christopher Malcolm as the role of Sarah's dad. Yeah, okay. and he went on to do movies like Highlander and he was in Empire Strikes Back. So that's him as Rogue Two. Now he is famously, yeah, he's famously the, uh, the snow speeder pilot who found Han and Luke. But if we all remember from the film, who was the one who got in touch first? That's right, it was Han. So Rogue Two didn't find them. They found him, all right? So Karma came back to bite him on his lying ass when he was shot down by an ATA walker. It's, Take it's, that! It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's, it's made up, Rob. It's okay. Live. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite character, Sudidimus! <laughs> uh, operated by Dave Goals, and the voice was supplied by David Shaughnessy. Now, if that name sounds familiar, David is the brother of Charles, who would play Mr. Sheffield, Sheffield in, in the, the Nanny. Nanny. And it was also in Days of Our Lives. Yeah. Does anyone, does anyone, yeah, uh, Jack, you, you watch, yeah, you watch him for that. Do you remember his name? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. Anybody remember his name from? 
No, no. <laughs> that was his name. Hello, my name is I have an eye patch. <laughs> no, that was the other guy. That was the other guy. The other guy had the eye patch. Not that I watched it at all. The Fireys. Now, the Fireys voices were supplied by some people who would go on to do extraordinary things. So, uh, first up one was Charles August, who was uh, Queeg in Red Dwarf. One of the other voices was Danny John Jules, Cat from Red Dwarf. And one of the other ones was Kevin Clash. Ooh. Oh, hey, Ooh. statute of limitations e. Hey, not quite getting away with it, but kind of getting away Ooh, with it. It's a bit awkward right now. Yes, how do we get out of this awkward Kevin Clash moment? Well, there's two words that can get us out of this awkward Kevin Clash moment. Mm. Caleb, Caleb Garfinkel! <laughs> At the box office, it opened at 8th in the box office and it never really moved from that and didn't go any higher. It was behind films that were popular at that time, like Karate Kid Part 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hate keeps and the hurt just keeps on coming. Mm. Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield. Legal Eagles with Robert Redford. Okay. Ruthless People with Danny DeVito. <laughs> R- <laughs> Running Scared with Gregory Hines and Billy Crystal. <laughs> one fan um, Top Gun <laughs> Top Gun was the number one film of that year and uh, the worst film of the 80s Ferris Bueller's Day Off oh. Oh. <laughs> how, Rob how could you say that to you know extensively overly long museum scenes staring into paintings I'm terribly sorry but I don't enjoy films where the lead character is a smug bastard and everyone tells you to like him I wanted to run him over in that expensive car <laughs> Then you won't be watching Rob Lloyd, the movie, anytime soon. (laughs) It's a very short film. (laughs) Now, Um, now, let's get to the reviews. Now, Roger Ebert. Roger Ebert uh, only gave it two out of four stars, saying it never really comes alive. Um, Gene Siskel, our arch nemesis here at Innes Lloyd from the Chicago uh, Tribune. Siskel. Siskel! really hated this film. He said uh, it was an awful film with a pathetic story and it was visually ugly. Uh, It's okay, everyone. He's dead. (laughs) 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 Oh, my God. (laughs) Ding dong, the Siskel's dead. (laughs) But the legacy lives on and it's one of those films much like uh, The Shawshank Redemption and a lot of other films that have gained popularity and a following from home entertainment, from videos and DVDs and stuff like that. Um, And it's become quite a popular cult hit. Um, uh, Jennifer Connelly in 1997 went on to say, I still get recognised for Labyrinth by little girls. Um, David Bowie in 1992 says, every Christmas a new flock of children come up to me and say, oi! You're the one from Labyrinth. I like, I like that he just has these Dickensian orphans go, excuse me, Mr. Bowie. <laughs> oh, it's Christmas time. <laughs> Get me the biggest codpiece you can. <laughs> <laughs> it's as big as me, sir. <laughs> Of course, the song Within You was used in that memorable scene in the film Labyrinth, uh, which was inspired by that noted uh, rap star and hip-hop artist MC Escher. I'm MC Escher and I'm here to say my stairs go everywhere. Yeah! MC Escher does not need to rhyme. Escher out. (laughs) Shit! (laughs) Fuck! (laughs) Cut! Okay, it's time for a, uh, another game. I think it is. I think it's time for another game, ladies and gentlemen. It is so time for another game. We're, so it's another time for Spot the Balls! Did you spot the bulge? There was at least one of them. (laughs) So many dicks. (laughs) 
<laughs> so little time. Yeah. But of course it is time for an audience, audience reenactment. reenactment. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go into our next game where we need you to be involved. We're going to do a reenactment. So everyone loves when their kids act out the scenes from the films that we love. And so we're going to do it again. We've done it for all of our one-off shows. So we need a volunteer who would like to come up and play the Goblin King himself, Jareth. Who would like to play Jareth in this reenactment? We have a script for you. We have a script for you. This is the first time ever no one has put their hands up. <laughs> Excellent. Come on up. Come on forward. And we've got in the role of narrator, as always, is Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. David Innes. Oh, right. I'm glad you remember my yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I'll be there just to do any sounds or actions if need be. So, and you're going to have to do it in oh, the... Oh, do I? Well, it's the best narration that we have, and we want you to do it as best you can with, yes, your yeah, Ringo I'm... star from Thomas the Tank Engine. Thank you very much. <laughs> It was a beautiful morning on the island of Labyrinth. <laughs> Our scene opens in a surreal landscape. Whole sections of stone staircases and debris are floating around in space. <laughs> Our heroine, Sarah, who is desperate to retrieve her baby stepbrother, Toby, from Jared the Goblin King, is found in the middle of all this desolate space, looking pensive. Look more pensive. <laughs> then enter Jareth looking resplendent in owlish costume. And of course, white tights. He has both death laser eyes and he has both death laser eyes and come fuck me eyes at the same time. <laughs> Their final battle has begun. Give me the child. <laughs> They think they're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> they're good, good. Yeah. Okay, Jared, Jared, you're live. Sarah, beware. I have been generous up until now, but I can be cruel. Sarah is dumbfounded by this statement. <laughs> <laughs> Very good dumbfoundment. <laughs> Jared rather dramatically puts his hand up in a stop right now kind of pose. Stop right now. No. <laughs> Stop it! Stop. Stop right now! Thank you very much. Yeah. Finally, the line dawns on Sarah and she speaks it with such power that Jared's entire kingdom crumbles. You have no power over me! You have no power over me! Over me, over me, over the me. <laughs> the clock chimes. Bong. <laughs> And with that, Shara has won. Jared throws his dream ball to the heavens. As it begins to descend, we see the Goblin King revert back to owl form. Shara attempts to catch the dream ball and it pops like a bubble. She's circled by the owl a number of times and eventually flies off. Shara looks around her environment and she is no longer in the desolate landscape, but back in her own home. Toby is safe in his bed. Sarah's father and stepmother have returned from their night out. <laughs> Everything is back to as it was. Well, perhaps not Sarah, who has thankfully grown a little, realizing she has to give up her childish attitude, but also she's not completely ready to grow up just as yet. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Jax, can we hit the, the closing music? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's working. It doesn't work? There we go. Here, of course it works. Oh, there we go. Here we go. There. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we've all learned something today about have. Labyrinth. That, <laughs> what have we, we learned, Innes? Uh, we have learned that, you know, the, the, the balls and such. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enough of that. Now, uh, we've come to the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. We're right here at the no, end. No, wait a minute. No, wait, 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 wait. No, we have not come to the end of the show. There is one more important thing that we need to do before the end of the show. Oh, of course. You remind me of the babe. What babe? No, 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 no. You don't get to know away with this. Caleb, hit it. Hat facts. Hat facts. Hatty, hatty, hat facts. Hat Facts was filmed in front of a live studio hat. <laughs> we are, there was 
there's a number of different hits in Labyrinth and we're going to go through them at top speed as we've only got like 30 seconds left of this show. <laughs> so the next we've got here is the crushed velvet tem, which you can see Sir Dynamis here is wearing. Uh, unfortunately, you probably can't see in this picture, so we better decapitate him. There we go. Uh, there we go, lovely. Uh, there we go. The crushed velvet tam, which does sound like something you might have with your coffee, is <laughs> derived from the tam o shanter, which you might imagine is from the stereotype of Scottish people that's been incredibly tartaned with a pom pom. That's the hat, not the Scottish people. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry to disappoint. Um, but also, in this particular version, it seems to be very reminiscent of the kind of academic term that one would wear. So it would imply that Sir Didymus actually has his PhD. Um, uh, and what studies, I'm not sure. One of the suggestions is perhaps the effects and correlations between the bog of eternal stench and conservative politics, um, <laughs> one possible idea. Uh, the next hat we've got is the tricorn hat, uh, which is worn both by uh, Bowie Irish mode, um, as well as the pirates in the dancing scene here. A fun fact as well, that tricorns are also referred to as cocked hats. Um, you know, it's funny because penises and such, <laughs> but the reason it gets its name is that the tricorn would often be worn with the brim tilted up. Now, one of the seldom used expressions that was, uh, has often been used is, I will knock you into a cocked hat, which again sounds very rude and delightful, but what it actually meant <laughs> was that you would be, if someone was to threaten that to you, that they would be punching you in the face so much so that you would look like a tricorn hat. Uh, Rob, can we see your knocked into a cocked hat face? <laughs> uh, if you ever want a cocked face, see Rob Lloyd. <laughs> Uh, and finally, we've got the Wiseman's Chapeau, if I can be a little French with you. Uh, which is, of course, uh, uh, two reasons why this is a big first in Hert Facts. Is that one, this is the first time we've ever dealt with a talking Hert, which is exciting. But, of course, the other big amazing first is that this talking Hert uh, spouts a lot of information. So it is, of course, also the first time that we've actually got on Hert Facts a Fact Hert. <laughs> so there we go, another big first. <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your hat facts. If you're going to have the lyrics up here, feel free to join me in the song of hat facts. Hat facts, hat facts, hatty hatty hat facts, facty facty hat facts, hat hat hatty fact, fact fact facty hat. Oh, 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 hat facts, hat facts, hat facts, hat facts. Sid hat, Sid. Good hat. Hat. <laughs> there we go. David Innes right there! Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our show. Thank you so much for coming along. We really appreciate you coming along and enjoying our one-off specials. Uh, we have one more one-off special to go this year, which will be in November. Flash it up right there. Yes. Ooh. In November. Yes, thank you for revealing that gag. Fuck you. Now. <laughs> Shit, we have to rewrite everything now. <laughs> we'll need a time turner to rewind it. Um, now, we are doing the 15th anniversary of the first Harry Potter film. And you've pretty, much, <laughs> you've pretty much responded like everybody else when we say that. You've got, no fucking way. <laughs> yes way, as they say in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Thank you very much. We've been to the slide. Good night.